Welcome to another edition of the Week in Motorsport. I'm Ed Foster, and I'm joined today by our Features Editor, Rob Widows. Rob, thank you very much for joining us. No problem. Pleasure. Today, we'll be talking about the Formula One race in Turkey, the Le Mans Series race at Spa, and also the World Rally Championship. <laughs> Rob, let's, let's start with the Turkish Grand Prix. Yeah. A w another very dominant victory for Vettel. C can anyone stop this guy? Oh, yes. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> Well, I mean, can anyone stop Vettel? Of course they can. Will they stop Vettel? Different thing. I mean, in my view, all the time that Sebastian Vettel has Red Bull and Adrian Newey behind him, it's going to be tough to stop him because I think it's the combination we should look at, not just, the dry, not just Vettel. I mean, I would have thought that later in the season, everybody, no, not everybody, Alonso, Hamilton and co. will be a lot, lot closer because it's a long season and they've got the time. They're catching up already, all right? They're not there yet, but in my view, they will be. And I think, yes, he's got a 30-point lead, is it, right now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a big lead, but I mean, one DNF, one accident, you know, it's, yeah. it's not over. And uh, wh what do you think is going through Mark Webber's mind at the moment? Because, you know, in uh, Turkey, he was almost half a second off Vettel in qualifying. And yes, last season, we saw that he could compete on a level with the German, but. But this season, he hasn't really been there, has he? No, th <clears throat> this is very, very interesting. I mean, what's going through his mind, well, probably what's going through his mind is, what the hell can I do? I'm driving as quick as I can. I thought I had the best car in the field. I thought I had as good a car as he has. Well, I'm not going to go into that because I would assume he has. But what I think is very interesting is that Christian Horner, when he first ran Vettel, when he first went to the Formula One team at Red Bull, Christian Horner said the thing that impressed him most was how far Vettel will, will allow the car to go to the edge of the track. He pushes it to its absolute limit. I mean, the guy is on the limit, okay? And if you compare the telemetries of Weber and Vettel, there's virtually nothing in it. You know, there's tenths. But whether Weber can really ever get those tents back, especially in qualifying, I, I, I'm not sure. But I, I think, you know, as you were saying there, with Vettel pushing it to the limit, surely that's got to be a sign of how confident he is at the moment, and yeah. you know th that he he can yeah. dominate. And you saw, I mean, with both Red Bulls, yes, yeah. they wanted to save a set of tyres, but in Q3 they just got out of their cars. I mean, imagine being another driver yeah. watching the screens. You just see these two guys get out of their yeah, cars. I yeah, mean, look, I mean, that's the Adrian Newey factor, isn't it? I mean, the car is clearly the class of the field, but we've only had four races. There's 15 or 16 races to go, and I can tell you. McLaren and Ferrari are not hanging about. They'll get there. Well, my view is they will get there. Whether or not Red Bull can edge ahead every time they, they get caught, I don't know. But it is, you're right, it's the mark of a truly great racing driver, is that last bit of detail. That la it, there's a bit of bravery in there as well, and of course, fantastic judgment. And we saw it with Senna. We, we've seen it with Hamilton. Yeah. Well, I mean, talking about judgment, let's, let's get your judgment on the, on the racing. Gimmicks or no gimmicks, you've got, you've got to agree it is, it is great to watch, or do you not? I feel undecided about it, Ed. I, I, part of me says, wow, this is incredible. There's so much going on. It's so exciting. Where do I look next? The other part of me says, what the hell is going on? <laughs> you know, I, I, I find it quite stressful to watch. Um, and if I was standing on the bank as a spectator, I don't think I'd have a clue what was going on. So... Uh, I'm, I'm undecided at the moment. Let, let's let it settle into the season a bit. I mean, it cannot be denied that it is being fixed. I mean, come on. I mean, <laughs> the tyres are designed to last 100 kilometres. Yeah. We've got flaps going up and down in the rear wing. We've got curves coming in and out. So, uh, yes, it's quite... It's exciting in a funny kind of way. Well, I, th I think you've got to take your hats off to Pirelli because yes they said yes to making a tyre that's going to degrade that quickly but what they've also done is managed to make a tyre that's got as much grip as any other tyre yeah. over the last few years and, and Vettel broke the lap record in qualifying I mean yeah. they obviously work yeah. Um, oh so, yeah I mean yeah. Uh, this is the other thing about this whole debate by the way and I'm sure lots of people out there will, will agree with this I hope so anyway is that uh, we asked for this stuff yeah, we we've only got it. ourselves to blame. You know, I mean, we'd be, we'd be moaning on for years about there's no overtaking. So let's not, uh, you know, 
let's not start moaning that there's too much of this, that, and the other. And on the tyre thing, yeah, I mean, it's very interesting because, you know, they're designed to fall apart. And yet, at the same time, they've got this fantastic grip. It's very interesting. And somebody told me the other day, this may be old news, by the way, that these tyres aren't made of rubber. They're made of a synthetic uh, rubber, a bit like synthetic oil, you know. Yeah. And the technology is, is remarkable, I agree yeah. with you. But interestingly, despite all the gizmos, despite the tyres, despite everything, the top drivers are still at the top. Yeah, I, I think that's the important thing. You know, if we had all these gizmos and, and we were seeing drivers and cars that shouldn't be up yeah. there winning races, and yeah. I, I think yeah. we'd be complaining. But personally, I think it's great. But I also think it's pretty amazing that a company can pour so much time and money into making something that doesn't work with Pirelli and its tyres. But anyway, let's, let's move on. Well, quite. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> let, let, let's also hope that it doesn't uh, get transposed into road cars or we'll be constantly changing our tyres. <laughs> yeah, we'll have pit stops in the petrol stations. Um, but something that st struck me during the Grand Prix was just how lost Michael Schumacher looked. And, you know, in qualifying, he was well off Rosberg's pace. Are, are his days numbered? I, I know we discuss this all the time, but really, it, we've got to. He's... He's, he's such a, a famous person in the motor racing world. Are his days numbered? I don't think we can answer that right now, Ed. Um, I think we can certainly answer it mid-season. Because by then, he really will have run out of excuses, won't he? Um, from a personal point of view, I find it all a bit sad because he was a great world champion. I mean, whether you were a fan of his or you weren't, whether you are or you aren't, he was an exceptional multiple world champion. Uh, and it, what he did for, for Ferrari, along with Rory Byrne and Ross Braun, was fantastic. Um, I guess every good thing has to come to an end, doesn't it? And knowing when to stop is such a skill, isn't it? Do, do, do you, I mean, maybe he should have stopped at the top. Well, yeah, I think there's obviously always going to be people who say that. But, you know, he's one of those guys who has to compete. And I just don't think he was happy being, he's, you know, he's the opposite of Jackie Stewart. When Jackie Stewart hung up his helmet, that was it. He yeah, had sure. no desire to do his story racing. Well, this is what I'm saying, you yeah. know, is, is, is why didn't he quit at the very top? Why has he come back? Well, people say he was bored. He did, didn't know what to do with himself. He certainly doesn't need the money. Um, I, I, whether he's all at sea, as you said, I'm not sure about that. Because you've got to remember that when he, in the great Ferrari years, he didn't really have to fight that kind of stuff, you know, did he, if you think mm. about it? No. I mean, he often, he almost, he invariably led from the front. And if you remember, when he was under pressure in those days, which wasn't very often, but when he was, he used to make odd mistakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, I mean, on, on my behalf, Michael, if you're watching, please can you win a race this season? Otherwise, I'm going to lose £10 to our, our design editor, Damon Cogman. So, uh, it's, yeah, just for me. That's my personal request. I, I don't think he's going to win a race, okay? <laughs> I, d I know, that's, that's the awful thing about it. Right, well, moving to Spa, the 1,000 kilometres, pretty good start for Peugeot on their Le Mans campaign, you've, you've got to say, 1-2. Um, th this is great news for the French manufacturer, isn't it? Yes, yeah, bad news for Audi. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I can't speak about the detail of that race, A, because I wasn't at the race, and B, because my knowledge of, of those cars is not, you know, fantastic. But what I do think about it is that it set us up for Le Mans beautifully. Mm. Because as far as I can gather, Peugeot pretty much trounced Audi round Spa for a thousand kilometres. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it was a complete trouncing, but I think what was quite interesting was that on the Le Mans test day, Audi was very much the fastest car. We moved to Spa and then now Peugeot's, you know, seemed to be more dominant. And as you say, it's perfectly set up for a month's time in, at Le Sartre, isn't it? Yes, and let's, let, let's, let's for heaven's sake remember one thing, and that is that Audi is an incredible company, an incredible racing team. And they will be working 25 hours a day, eight days a week to win at Le Mans, especially after being beaten by Peugeot at Spa. I don't think we can say, oh, well, Peugeot won Spa, they'll win Le Mans. No way, we can't say that. Audi really know how to do yeah. Le Mans. Yeah, well, I mean, Peugeot's now won the Spa 1,000 kilometers in for five, well, oh, five yeah. times in a row, yeah, so. Yeah. You know, and they haven't, certainly haven't won Le Mans five times in a row, so... Uh, I think what we should be thankful for is how fantastic sports car racing is right now. Yeah. Thrilling. I mean, yeah. it's very exciting. Um, better than it's been for years, in my view. There's real competition at the front. Yeah. There's great competition in the midfield as well, actually. Um, the Aston Martin is a glorious racing car. If, well, if it works, it's fingers well, crossed. Yeah, okay, but, yeah. you know, 
Well, I, t I completely agree with you on that, but I think they've got to sort out the diesel and petrol regulations because, I mean, as Henry Pescarolo said, how do I go to my sponsors and, and explain to them I'm nine seconds off yes. the pace? You know, yes. and, and, he, and he was very sort of honest about it. He said, look, I, I know I'm not a factory team, and I don't expect to be on exactly sure. the same pace as someone like Audi or Peugeot, but there's, you know, I think they've got to get that sorted. They have, and that's not going to be easy, is it? Um, I mean, David Richards, I know, is fighting very hard with the FIA to, to, to close this gap. Yeah, with the ACO. Sorry, yeah. I meant the ACO. <laughs> yeah. Dead right? Um, and yes, it w I mean, from a spectator's point of view, it would certainly make the racing more interesting and better, I think. Mm. Um, because you have got, you've got two classes of racing going on, haven't you? Mm. Yep, yeah, yeah. and I, the sooner they sort it, the better. But the pro I think the other problem is that the diesel technology is young. You know, so they yeah. can develop it so much faster yeah. than the ACO yeah. can peg them back. So yeah. anyway, time will tell. Yeah. Right, the World Rally Championship. Uh, how exciting is it? I mean, I know you're a huge rally fan, Rob. So yeah, you know, if, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you didn't have a job, you'd probably be lost in the forest <laughs> around the world watching rally. Yeah, I would but, be actually. Would um, be. But uh, it's, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, I, lo I love it. I love the WRC, and I, and I love it even more this year. I went off it a bit the last couple of years, but only only because of the Loeb factor. I mean, I mean, the guy's fantastic, and you know, I have nothing but admiration for him. He, he's he's possibly, I'd say, you know, the the most talented all-round racing driver on the planet. Actually. Really? Yeah, I I, I think that's not uh, too much of an exaggeration. I mean, we never. There was talk that he was coming to Formula One and he did a test for Red Bull and he was very yeah. quick, very quickly indeed yeah. in that car. But he ne that's not going to happen now, which I think is a great yeah. shame. But anyway, coming back to WRC, yes, I mean, two great things are happening, aren't they? One, Sebastian Ogier is giving Loeb a really hard time yeah. <laughs> and that's exciting. Uh, and secondly, in Sardinia, the most recent rally, the Mini is in the top six yeah. on, on its first outing. Well, okay. Sixth position doesn't sound great, does it? But it is great yeah. for the debut of a car, Danny Sordo's car. And I think that the combination of Pro Drive, headed up by David Richards, uh, BMW, and two high caliber drivers, you know, that, this yeah. project is not going to fail. Yeah. No way. I mean, it's, it's, you've got to love it that there's another manufacturer in there and yep. one that can properly challenge yep. for, for, for rally wins. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, it's worth saying, I think, that uh, uh, Jean Todd, who is now the president of the FIA, has done a lot uh, for World Rally Championship. Um, I mean, no one knows more about rallying than Jean Todd. Um, you know, it's where, where he had some of his biggest successes. And good for him, I say. You know, I think he's really, really uh, helped it he is helping it come back to where it should be. Yeah, I mean, do, do you think that was sort of part of the problem with the decline was because Max Mosey was so focused on Formula One? I, I, you know, yes, he looked at others. He was the president of the FIA. He had to. But I think with Jean Todd, as you mentioned, he's a big fan of and has history in mm. rally, sports cars mm. and Formula One. Mm. So it's, I think it's... Yeah, I, I mean, it's possible. I, I don't know the answer to that question. But w what I do know is that if you talk to a lot of people in the IRC, which is the Inter Intercontinental Rally Challenge, which is a pretty high caliber series actually, and very competitive, they will say w the one thing that might prevent them going to WRC, setting the money aside for a moment, is that uh, it doesn't have fantastic global television coverage, you know, mm. and it needs it and it should have it, and I really hope it does, because that's what brings the money in. But hey, I mean, you know, as we are now, it's getting better and better, and I'm absolutely sure that Mini will not be the last new manufacturer to come into WRC. No, well, the uh, Volkswagen, I think, are set to announce something quite, quite exciting soon. So we'll, yeah, We keep we'll hearing see. that Volkswagen are coming in. I hope they do. I wonder if they'll come in as Volkswagen or Skoda. That'll be interesting. We hear that Saab may be coming in. Can't imagine what car it would be, but anyway. Mm, yeah, that'll be interesting. Anyway, yeah, lots to look forward to. I think, actually, it is also, and I'm sure lots of you out there will agree, is that, you know... This is a bit of a vintage year for motor racing in general, I, I would suggest. You know, all the great, all the sort of international categories, Formula One, MotoGP, WRC, NASCAR in the States, IndyCar, actually particularly IndyCar, you know, it's a very exciting yeah. year and, and very healthy, which is amazing when you think mm. that 
you know, we've had this global recession and we've got pressure from the environmental groups. It's, yeah. it's motor racing, I think, touch wood. It's looking yeah. good. It's looking good. And there's yeah. plenty to write about. So I think I should probably let you go and actually write some of the stuff that you okay. need to for the magazine. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, as always, it's, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah. See you again. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back next week with another Week in Motorsport. I've been Ed Foster. We've been Motorsport Magazine. Thank you very much. Yeah.